So in this video, I'll be making this in After Effects. The truth is, I don't even know what this effect is called. If you do, please let me know in the comments below. For this video, I'll be using some AI photos. You can apply this to, say, interview footage or other montage or whatever you see fit. I'll quickly go through what I did to prepare the assets. I first went to Adobe Firefly, but you can use any AI photo generator. Here's the prompt I used. And then I bring them into Photoshop, cut the background, and then I ended up with just six mugshots. Then I bring them into After Effects. I make a square composition of 1200 by 1200. Then I create a bin and import all photos. As you see, they are all transparent photos without background. Drop one of them into your composition, press S to open up the scale property, and just scale it down a little bigger than your comp. Bring in the solid layer as a background. I also set it just off white. Then I bring in the fractal noise effect. If you don't see your effects tab, it's under the window button at the top. Search fractal noise, drop the effects on your photo. Then we'll start tweaking the effect controls. First, change noise type to block. Then under complexity, change it to one. Now you see, they are just little grayscale blocks. Then go to transform, expand it by clicking this arrow increase the scale to make the blocks a lot bigger. We're going to fine tune this value later on in the video, but we'll leave it for now. Then we're going to bring up the contrast. This is to push the off white blocks to white and the off black blocks to black so that you see more black and white blocks and less gray blocks. Then we'll look for another effect, shift channels. Just bring it onto the same picture layer. On the effect stack, it should be below fractal noise. Under take alpha from, select luminance. This is to say if it's white, it should be completely opaque. If it's black, it should be completely transparent. Just make sure your background is turned off to check this. Under revolution, add a keyframe at zero second, then move forward to two seconds, change revolution to 359. This is what the animation looks like. Now we have this, we use it as the mask for the original photo. Press Ctrl or Command D to duplicate your layer. On the top layer, delete all the effects. Then under Track Mat, link the top layer to the bottom one. We're going to add the loop to this animation. On the bottom layer, press U twice to reveal the properties with keyframes. In this case, just the evolution property. Hold down Alt or Option and click the stopwatch to open up the expression window. Type in Loop Out continue. This will make the animation loop through the entire composition. Then select both layers, right click and select pre-compose. Or simply you can press Ctrl or Command, Shift and C. Now you're in the pre-comp. You should just see the two photo layers. Press Tab to see where you are in the composition structure and select the original comp if you want. The animation should remain the same. What we're going to do next is to use other five photos and animate them in a different pattern. So different blocks will show at different times. That's why I make a precom of the first photo so that I could use it as a template. Bear with me as I'll do this step by step next. Make a copy of the precom and open it. You'll see the same photo we used. To make sure of this, simply right click on the layer, reveal source layer in project. Then you will see the layer being highlighted in the project window. Make sure you're on Precomp 2, which is a copy. Make sure the layer you want to replace is highlighted or selected in your timeline. Hold down Alt or Option and drag the photo you want to replace with on top of the original photo layer. Release your mouse and your photo should have been replaced, but all the attributes and effects remain the same. If you want to replace another layer, say for example the bottom layer in this comp, you have to first select it in your timeline, otherwise it won't work. Replace the bottom layer, hold down Alt or Option and drag the new photo on top. As you can see, the animation is now updated with the new photo. Come back to your original comp, bring Precomp 2 into your timeline. 
you don't see any difference because the animations are identical. You don't see any difference yet because the animations are identical. Right click and select time, enable time remapping. Expand the layer, find the time remap property, hold down Alt or Option and click the stopwatch. In the expression box, type in time minus one. By the way, the value one is per project and it's just temporary. Uh, as I'll explain later. But you can see the animation now is offset and different blocks show at different times. The next part is to duplicate four other compositions and update them with new photos. To duplicate the comps, just select one and press Ctrl or Command D. Then make sure you're in the right comp, select the right layer, then replace with the new photo one by one. I'll speed up this part as just repetitive work. So once I've done updating all the photos, I have six precoms and they should be all in my original composition. I also make the mistake here with the expression. Initially, I thought if I subtract each layer by one over six of the time, I'll end up with showing different pictures one after another of each block. But I was wrong. I have a more straightforward approach later on in this video. So just ignore the expression typed on the screen for now. I also bring in a no object and call it control. This is where I'll put all my expression sliders. If you are new to expression controls, I have a growing playlist explaining how to use them. Link in the box below. In your control layer, add the slider control. Select the second part of the expression and pick with this slider control. Toggle the slider control until this hole here is filled by one of the photos. If you see any other blank space or holes in your composition, duplicate this slider control. You can press Ctrl Command D and rename it so you don't get confused. Open another layer's time expression box. You can do it by selecting the layer and press E twice. Pick with the second half to the slider control. Now you can tweak the value to fill up this blank space. Finally, if you want the animation to end on one of the photos, make sure this final photo is at the top of the stack. Double click this layer to open up the composition. In your precomp, select the bottom layer where the fractal noise effect is. Open up contrast and brightness. Add in some keyframes. When the photo is fully revealed, the contrast should be low and the brightness should be high. Back to your main comp, add fade out to all bottom layers. There's a preset expression, just search fade out in effects tab and drag it to your layers. Then you can shorten your layer by going to where you want it to end. You can shorten it by manually dragging your mouse or press Alt Option plus right square brackets. Just one more thing we can do to add the slider control for the size of the blocks. You first bring in another slider then copy the value of the fractal noise to this slider. Open one of your precoms, go under fractal noise and copy this transform value to the slider. You might also want to lock it at the top so you won't click away. Then open up the precom, find the fractal noise effect under transform property, pick with this little icon to the slider. Repeat this process with every other precom. In hindsight, I should have done it much earlier. When I first make the template, I should have linked the transform value to this slider. But lessons learned. So now if you want to increase or decrease the size of the blocks, you can do it with just this slider. So that's it about this video. I hope you've enjoyed it and thanks again for staying with me. As usual, the project file is freely available on my Gumbroad, link down below. Let me know what else you would like to see, leave a comment and I'd appreciate it if you can like and subscribe. That's it, until next time, happy editing.